Matt here from UK Hammocks. Today we're going to uh, take another look at my pack load for a uh, sort of three to four day hammock camping pack. Um, this pack is uh, a deep winter pack. Um, it'll keep me warm, good into the sort of minus 15 uh, and maybe a little bit below. Um, so since the last video quite a few things have changed um, and the big thanks to that really is to everyone that contacted me and gave me a little bit of advice on somewhere that I could you know, shave a little bit more weight. Uh, and one of the big ones that kept coming up was the pack itself. Um, so we addressed that head on. Um, and I've actually got two packs now. I've got the Gossamer Gear um, G6 pack, the Spinnaker one. And I've also got this, which is the z Packs XO pack, which is the Cuban Fibre Nylon Hybrid Fabric. Um, it's very lightweight. I took the option that doesn't have the internal frame. Um, my plan was that I want to get as light as possible, so having a frame really isn't necessary. Um, and this shot cord on the back here is for uh, occasionally, uh, as a scout leader, I have to sleep on the floor. I know, it's not good for business, but uh, I do. Um, and for that purpose, I'll take a small plus cell phone pad or something similar, but it just gives you something I can strap it to on the back. Um, it's, I didn't actually want to pay for the option of having you know, a pad pouch put on the back of this um, when a bit of shop cost costs you a couple of quid and you can, well, a couple of pence even, and you can tie it off the, all the attachment points. Additional things I had put on was the top um, side pouches up here. Um, I thought they were a pretty good idea. Um, but that, that, that was it, that was the only thing I had put on. Um, I like the big mesh pocket on the front where I can stow stuff in there. So the total pack weight uh, before I think was about five and a half to six and a half kilos um, and I consider that to be fairly lightweight and I think a lot of people I spoke to, especially in the UK, agreed with me. Um, however, you know, there's an awful lot of emails, um, there's quite a long one from um, Bigfoot, Matt Perry, uh, who's a good friend of mine. Um, he, he actually gave us some really good pointers of places where you know, I was just carrying unnecessary weight. Things like stuff sacks, I was using stuff sacks for everything. But why? You know, um, I didn't actually carry that much stuff, so things didn't really need an individual stuff sack. Um, I find that quite difficult. I like things organised in my pack. Um, maybe it's a military thing. I used to, you know, write on the side of my Bergen what was in each rocket pouch, so I knew what was in there. But um, I'm getting used to this, and I, and I can live with it now. So um, it's a lot lighter. So pack weight of this. I just put a piece of paper. I've weighed everything for you. Total pack weight is 4.15 kilos 4.15 kilos now that is without water but it is including um, my water bottles and it is without food but it is including everything that would go with the food um, included in this is fuel for my uh, alcohol stove um, so let's break it down and I'll, I'll talk about what's in here I've got my, my weights of stuff so you know you can kind of get an idea of what it is I'm carrying right then Start on the outside of the pack. Uh, in the front pocket there, that is a uh, reflective pouch uh, which I use for rehydrating my meals in. Um, I like to ziplock bag cook, so I tend not to dirty my pot up cooking in it. So I boil water in my pot, add it to a dehydrated meal, and then it goes in there to rehydrate for sort of 10 to 15 minutes. But I'll cover food later on in the video because I want to you know, talk about some other bits. My water bottles, uh, I've got a 1 litre and a 500 ml. Uh, the weights of these are 33 grams for this one and 42 grams for that. Um, again, I consider that to be fairly light for a water carrying source. Um, now, with this setup, I haven't got a water filter and I haven't got anything like Aqua Mirror tablets. Um, but the places that I'm you know, planning on going this time, um, it water's not going to be an issue at all. So, if it came to it, I would just boil the water and filter it through a bandana or something if it got that bad. But I really can't foresee that at all. Uh, Next up is my kind of first aid um, and hygiene kit and a pack towel. Now the whole weight of this entire set, including the towel, is uh, 380 grams. Uh, and in there we've got an awful lot of stuff. Uh, I've got a big first field dressing. Uh, again, I spoke about this before. You know, yes, you know, I'm fairly well trained in first aid. Uh, I've got quite a bit of you know survival knowledge and bushcraft knowledge, but. The last thing I would have been doing if my legs hanging off is looking for a bit of sphagnum moss to attach to me, you know, my bleeding out artery. So I carry that and it's worth the extra weight in my opinion. Um, in there I've got um, a little thing of soap which is actually dishwashing, you know, fairy liquid. Um, if it's good enough for mum's hands, it's good enough for me. And it also means I can wash my pots out um, if, if I need to. I've got a lighter in there um, and some toilet roll. I don't know if carry, you know, extra things but um, I don't 
pet hate is people burying toilet roll. Just burn it, it's paper. You know, get rid of it, it's just a waste on the land. Um, blister packs, some, uh, what's that tape called? Micropore tape, um, I've got a gauze swab, um, some burn gel, a couple of little slips of um, ibuprofen, paracetamol, toothpaste, toothbrush, and some alcohol hand gel. And obviously, a pack towel that's just been cut down a little bit. Um, so that I can wipe any condensation off my tarp if I need to, um, and also I can, you know, clean myself. Let's put that back in there. All right, this side, um, and again, this is another big change. This is my new rain gear. Um, now I had a fairly big Paramore jacket, and I swore by it. Um, but one thing that was brought to my attention, that I didn't really think about, is if you incorporate your rain gear and your insulation in one item. If your rain element fails, then also your insulation fails, um, and that could be quite fatal. I'm not going to wear my rain gear in bed, so there's no need for it to be big and bulky. It needs to be small and lightweight and do the trick. Um, and a good friend of mine, Ginge, who lives way down south, I mean, that far down, he may as well be in France. Um, it's really close to the sea, he says. We were chatting, and I did the, I'm doing a custom hammer for him right now. Um, and we were talking about rain gear and he sent me this up to have a look at. Now this is the ULA rain kilt. I know I don't look like a skirt wearing kind of guy, but to be honest, this is really good. Now I've seen um, the z packs cloud kilt, whatever they call it, um, and you know I'm not a slim fast ad sort of guy and I, I like to eat and the rain kilt from z packs was really really quite tight fitting. In fact a mate of mine, Adam from AC Flukes, got one. Uh, and he said it was practically useless, he couldn't walk in it. And he's got an awful lot of just stuff. Um, so this is massive, um, and I won't put it on, but it really is good. And it covers kind of from above my waist right down to the bottom of my calves. Um, and apart from that, it's a multi-use item. I can open this up and lay it out, and it's like a little picnic cloth. I wanted to sit down for my lunch, and I wanted to keep myself dry, maybe take my shoes off. Um, you know, add them in my feet, got a couple of hot spots or something. I can do that and I can do it all staying nice and dry. It packs down really small and the total weight of the kilt is 100 grams. And this that's the extra large size. Now I know that if you buy these from ULA, I don't think they can guarantee you the colour. Um, I mean, obviously Ginger's lucky and got an olive green. Next up was my rain cover. Now you may notice I've not mentioned the pack cover yet, and that's because I've got rid of it. Um, I was lucky enough a couple of days ago to get my hands on some spinnaker, um, and I'll talk before I open this because it's loud. So what I did was I copied um, as close as I could get in my own mind to the poncho ground sheet that z -Pack's made without it being a ground sheet. I didn't want to open it up, so I've stitched it all up down the sides, but it has got a zippered neck and a hood on. And it is big enough to cover my pack. So it's ideal. It does both things. Um, it's a pack cover and it's a very good, very lightweight poncho with a hood. And the total weight of this comes in at 97 grams. Um, it's going to get noisy, but I'm going to quickly put it on so you can see. Right. Obviously, it's t shirt size. Um, so it's not going to keep the bottoms of your arms closed, but again, who really cares, as long as my core's dry, right, I'm not so close. I put a draw cord in the bottom, so I can sit the bottom up, and that also helps it keep it down to the pack behind it. And then there's a hood, and it can be draw corded up, and a zippered neck, and I just used a, a YKK waterproof zipper, and it only comes up so far, but it keeps quite a good view. Now I know, look, a bit like one of them wallies that goes to a theme park and buys a bin bag, but you know, this is high quality spinnaker cloth. Um, so in my mind, that cloth is pretty cool, and it's dry, and so there's so much room in the back there to have a pack in. Um, so if it really gets that wet, and now I know that Joe doesn't claim that his Cuban packs are waterproof, but Cuban fibre is waterproof. So this is going to repel quite a lot of rain. So if it's just a bit of a drizzle, and maybe for an hour, I wouldn't bother putting a pack cover over this. Um, and if I needed to, I suppose I could just, you know, tie this on over the top. Um, but if it you know, was an all-day downpour and I really had to be hiking, I could just double up with this, pop my kilt on, uh, and I'm good to go. So this is a new rain kit. As I said, this has saved an awful lot of weight. I'm probably talking maybe 600 grams um, in removing, you know, rain pants and a rain, a full rain jacket. Um, let me take this off.
we'll stuff that in the front. Okay, so there's the um, you know the rain kit covered under some it has saved me an awful lot of weight. I'll come down this side now. My titanium stakes. These are the Outkit Tykes, I think they're called. Um, they're triangular in shape. I don't know if you can see them. Um, I mean, if I wanted to cut weight, I could remove this cord that's on top. You know, totally remove it or swap it for a lighter weight, arm steel, something like that, I suppose. Um, but I like it. It's orange and I can see it. Um, I may one day change it to the yellow or zing it. Um, so it's a little bit more visible, but that's something for the future. Total weight, uh, the 10 stakes is 115 grams. And then next to that is my cut kit and my head torch. Um, I'll do cut kit in a second. Head torch is a very, very cheap high gear. I think it cost me about a pound at Go Outdoors and it weighs in at 33 grams. It's got a red filter on there for, I have no idea why. Uh, if you wanted to use it, um, you know, try and stay clear of torches that only have red. Uh, it may be great if you want to be all tactical and sneaky peeky, but they're absolutely rubbish reading maps with because contour lines on a map don't show up under red torch light. Um, so there you go, you learn something new every day. Head torch and a cut kit. This is my Foster's pot uh, from Mini Ball Design with a lid with maple knob. Uh, it's got a reflective cosy and the reflectors it's attached to the top of the lid which obviously keeps the innards of the pot dry and hot even. In there I've got a fire steel. This is a four ounce Nalgene and I will take it on out. In there is the M1 uh, which isn't actually my lightest stove and um, I didn't actually look in this before I shot the video or weighed anything but I could go for the Elite uh, and that would also remove the need for the pot stand that's in there. In there's also a windshield. So that's my cooking vessel. And we'll pop that over to one side. Rather than fucking around with it. Um, and again, I've spoken about those in the past and I think they're, they're really good. Now, you can trick it out, you can change it. Um, I've heard the guy at Batch Stoves is now making alternatives to beer cans out of spun aluminium. Um, and as soon as they're out, I'll still get my hands on one and I'll show you one of those. I have got the Amusa pots uh, and I like them, but I'm not too keen on the handle. Um, it's a bit, you know, cumbersome. But, you know, each of their own with pots as far as I'm concerned. Right, we'll break inside and see what's in the middle. Uh, this has a, a top compression strap, uh, which you switch your can strap to the top. I use it for just keeping this closure nice and flush so there's no chance of any water ingress through the top there. And it just hangs over to one side. And again, it's a roll top which just makes it really, really good. Um, and it's also got hook and loop in the centre there. So it keeps everything dry. Cube and tarp, um, you know, we've talked about this before, you've seen it in other videos. Uh, total weight of this, including guy lines and the ridge line stuff, is 247 grams. And in here I have a Cuban pack liner. Um, hammock. This is the Rudman X uh, hammock that you know, you've seen the video last. This is my version, I wanted to make it slightly lighter, so I only had a half zipper when I did mine. Uh, and in there again, it's all of the accessories, tree straps, whoopie slings, toggles, etc. Peak bag, tribe bag sort of thing, ridgeline organiser. Um, I think that's about it. And the total weight of this one is 428 grams. So that, that is my hammock. And in here is a little spinnaker stuff sack. Uh, now I know what we talked about stuff sacks before, but um, see the spinnaker is a pretty lightweight fabric. And in there is my down sleeves. Uh, I'll get it all out and show you. Down sleeves. Uh, again, you know, I've, for those of you that don't know what down sleeves look like or do, they're pretty much not the right way around. I never remember. It's like having, you know, a jacket on. It's best to have a little twist in. And there you go. So you've got a set of down sleeves. Now you know you may think, well, why do you want to keep your arms warm? But if you've got, like I generally, um, I'll talk about what I'm wearing later on. Um, but you know you can do everything in these, and you're not overheating your core. If you were to maybe uh, doing some hiking and you have any pack on your back and that's quite warm, but your arms are getting a bit chilly, you can throw a set of down sleeves. 
Also, they work really great as a pillow. Um, but this coupled up with, uh, I've got a long sleeve fleece that I occasionally wear when I'm walking, or I've got a down gillet that marries up with these. Um, it's something else. It's just another way of layering your body rather than carrying extra sets of clothing to you know, make up for a gillet and sleeves and a long sleeve top. You know, I could use it all in conjunction with each other to get kind of four or five different items of clothing. I've also got um, my trusty possum down hat that again is really warm and it can you know, come right down over your eyes if you wanted to. That's a really warm hat. Uh, I've got a thick pair of socks there and inside there there's another pair of socks um, which is that spares when we're walking. These are thick, these are actually seal skin socks and they're waterproof uh, so if I needed to have some sort of waterproof sock when I was walking not that it bothers me too much but I use them generally for sleeping and a buff. Uh, this is a Rohan buff, I think they're all made by buff um, but the way I use this is from, you know, when I'm going to bed, as I said, this is a deep winter setup. The quilts alone in here are about 1.7 kilos. Um, I pull my buff right up over my face, tuck it in around my neck, and then I put my hat on. So, you know, the only thing out there is, is my eyes, uh, and if I wanted to regulate the face, I could pull it down under my chin, or I could totally remove the buff in the night if it's getting hot, and if news be. You can just pull it all back up again if you start getting cold. So that's my my little warm kit bag. Um, no, that's what I call it at least, um, and that does me pretty well, uh, especially in these kind of climates. And obviously, you know, I'm stood out here in a t-shirt and a, a thin chillet top underneath. But again, I'll talk about my clothing uh, in just a minute. And all that's left in here is my two down quilts. And I'm a big believer in not over compressing you down. Um, a pack like this is ideal because it is such a big pack and you know this is the most I will be carrying obviously I haven't got any food in here yet but that'll go in the top and in the front um, you know the, the, the further into the year I get into the summer there'll be less and less in this pack so having a pack that compresses down like this it allows you to regulate how compressed your down needs to be if you haven't got that much in your pack you can have your down you know fairly lofted up in there one it gives you a comfortable carry on your back because you've got nothing sharp digging in uh, you know small little really rock solid stuff sacks where you packed you down in and you've compressed it right up um, but also it you know it prolongs the life of your insulation be it synthetic you know it's not just down that gets damaged from over compression uh, synthetic fibers do as well so that is it that is everything that's in the pack um, again like I say we've, we've shared quite a lot of useless stuff out things that didn't need to be in there um, and things that really did need to be in there but I had kind of overthought it stuff like the rain gear and whatever um, so what I'll do now is I'll quickly talk about clothing that I normally wear when I'm walking so you can kind of get an idea of you know, what I'm wearing and then we'll have a quick chat about food. Let's get that out of the way. So in this bag, this is my clothes. Now this bag doesn't come with me because I'm generally wearing the stuff that's in here. Um, now before I mentioned, take these sleeves off. That what I normally wear is a long sleeve top like this, this is a merino wool underlayer. Um, I don't generally wear it with a t-shirt, this is for purposes of the video only. Um, but I do tend to walk in something like this, which is just a long sleeve t-shirt fleece. Now, again this keeps my core warm. And if I want to throw a set of sleeves on. It comes over the top of the fleece keeps the rest of my body warm and then as, a, as an extra thing like I said you know this setup really is designed for extremely cold you know environments I've got a down gillet on the top there as well that pretty much gives me a seamless join with where my down sleeves are um, and again you know this kind of jacket uh, is rated you know well into the minuses minus 20 and below so with the layers that I've got underneath, um, I'm, I'm not going to encounter any cold. And the, another, you know, feature that I was, you know, informed of and I've looked at more and more is the lighter weight you need to go, the less clothing you have to take. Um, so you know, the spare t-shirt, spare trousers, spare underwear is out. Oh, I've got spare socks. Um, one pair. I use very thin um, triathlon socks that are made by Thousand Mile, Thousand Mile Tri 
tri sock or something like that. Um, and you hold them up and you can watch telly through them. But because of the footwear that I wear, which is the Solomon Speed Cross, um, these aren't Gore-Tex. Um, and the reason I didn't get the Gore-Tex ones was because these are much more flexible. They've got a good mud claw bottom on, um, which is utterly lethal on slippy stone. Even walking around on a pavement, if it's wet and a bit algae, these are lethal. Uh, but for the majority of walking, they're absolutely spot on. Uh, I've noticed the lighter my pack got, the less needed I needed for any ankle support. Um, so along with these, a very thin sock's great. These are designed to be worn barefoot. Um, or in my opinion, they are the way they've got like an inner sock in them. Um, so the thinner socks work better. And if they get wet, I was out uh, when I did the wind of me away, and these got utterly sodden. Um, and I hung these up on my tart ridge line inside the tart and the temperatures were about minus four or five and they were dry in the morning and the socks were dry because there's nothing to them, they don't hold any moisture at all. Where were we? Clothing, yeah, I, I, like obviously trousers, um, depending on what time of year it is, I'll wear a thin pair or shorts in the summer. Uh, in the winter I'll thicken up, these are 5'11 um, trousers, the poly cotton ones, not the thick canvas cotton, uh, and these are really great as well. Um, so that's my, my clothing wear, um, which like I say, it obviously can be regulated with stuff like the buff and the hat. Um, I never really suffer with cold hands, um, but if I did, you know, I'd either use my pockets or I can, you know, I'll maybe add a set of thin, thin gloves in. Um, as I was saying, with the clothing, you know, the coldest part of your walk, which is normally when you stop and it's at night time, you want to be wearing everything when you go to bed. Uh, and that was a you know a point that was made to me and I, I kind of took it on board because it's very true what's the point in carrying you know down trousers and a down top if the only time and if you want to put it on when you're walking and carrying all that extra weight in quilt sleeping bags and sleeping gear you know having a set, spare set of thin slip pyjamas if when you go to bed and it gets to minus 15 and you're wearing absolutely everything or, or you're, you're hot um, and you're in your quilt and you look in your bag and you've still got extra jumpers and fleeces well you know there's no need to be carrying that that's extra kit unnecessary kit when you go to bed lay yourself up everything on if you need to be put your rain gear on and get into bed and you should be nice and warm and go to sleep with an empty rucksack um, so that's kind of the way i've gone for it when i'm walking i'm hot i don't need to be you know wearing a down quilt so that's why so i can regulate with my jacket i can have the sleeves on if i need to i can lay my body pretty well um, and I can keep control of you know my body heat. I think that's kind of cool clothing, doesn't it, in the pack? So let's very quickly now talk food. Um, okay, folks. Sorry about the change of scenery, but the uh, the weather took a turn for the worst there. So we've uh, we've come inside, but we're going to talk about food anyway. So no better place really than in the kitchen, is there? Um, now. You know, food's been a kind of a hot topic for me over the past couple of months, and I've been down many avenues with it. Um, and in the past, you know, I've tried all sorts of stuff. Uh, and I think at the, at, right now, uh, I'm at a point I'm actually pretty happy with the food that I'm going to be using for my camping. Um, I'm pretty happy with the, the process of, you know, acquiring it and the process of producing it out, you know, on the trail. So I'll start from the beginning. Um, the last trip that we videoed. Um, or oh, sorry, the last trip that I did a pack video on was the Windermere Way trip. And for that, we were using these Expedition Foods from expeditionfoods.com, which is a UK-based company. Uh, in my opinion, they are the finest UK-based company producing this kind of food. This isn't imported like Mountain House. Um, now, I know there's other brands out there like Packet Gourmet and stuff, but they're all in America. And to get them here in the UK is a little bit of an issue. Um, you know, I've had real trouble emailing these people and saying, could you send me some so I can try them? And you just get a pretty much blank no. Um, this stuff's very good. And, you know, it really is very nutritional food. Tastes pretty good for this kind of, you know, freeze-dried meal. Um, but the downside is they're expensive. You know, £4.50 a meal. Add that up, you know, you're talking over £12 a day if you were going to use a breakfast, some sort of meal and a, and a dessert or a, a lunch meal and then something like this. Um, you know, that's a lot of money if you're going out for three days, you know, £36 just to feed yourself. Just before we've had any beverage or drink or any snacks, trail mix, that kind of thing. Um, it becomes expensive. I mean, maybe for you it might not be expensive, but to be honest, I'd rather spend my money elsewhere um, than on food. 
Along with that, I used to use things like this. Uh, these are Nescafe original three-in-one coffee sachets. All it's got is coffee, sugar, and milk in them. And again, they did the trick, but you know, they taste horrible. It's not nice coffee. Uh, and I personally, I like coffee. Um, I, I like nice, strong coffee, aromatic coffees, kind of stuff like. Um, now I do have a coffee machine, and I do make you know proper coffees. But if I'm after something instant, I buy high-end coffee. And that's not because I'm some sort of coffee snob, but I just like nice coffee. Uh, this is like a Kenko, 100% Brazilian, dark and smoky coffee. And it's really nice, and it's full packs with flavours, a very intense brew. So, I use that, and I use it along with stuff like Coffee Mate, because it's creamier than using normal milk powder, and, you know, creamier than using normal milk. And I like one sugar. Now they don't do that in a sachet, I can't ask for a Kenko dark and smoky Colombian coffee with two spoons of coffee mate and one spoon of sugar. But I can make it. Now all I've done here is I've used my vacuum sealer to make myself a little bag up, I get bags on a roll. Um, my bags come on a big roll like this, so it's just one long bag and you just cut it and seal it to the size you want. So I cut a piece off the bottom, seal it snip it up the middle which gives me two of these little sachets for coffee. So there's no wastage um, and I can make my own coffee that's exactly just how I like it and it's brilliant. You know it's a really nice brew and I look forward to having one of these and I do these you know I, I measure out the Horlicks or I measure out um, a hot chocolate and it's much cheaper to buy these things in bulk if you have them in the house anyway you're not actually wasting any money it doesn't cost you anything because it saves you buying extra coffee sachets, which aren't really that nice, or little hot chocolate sachets that aren't really the one you like, but it's the only one you can get in a sachet. If you've already got it and you're buying a tub, just take a couple of spoons out, put it in a little bag. You don't have to vacuum seal it. I do that because, you know, ask my wife, I vacuum seal everything now since I've got the vacuum pack. If it stays still for longer than a day, it gets vacuum packed. But it works for me, keeps the air out, keeps things fresh. Uh, and also, you know, I've started doing meals. Now, um, We'll start off with the simple things. This here is um, a bolognese. So, for those of you that don't know, I imagine everybody does. You know, it's kind of minced beef, um, like a dolmio tomato based sauce, bit of garlic, onion, um, some tomato. Uh, what else would we put in there? Oh, I'd say that's probably about it. Or some mushroom, uh, a little bit of salt and pepper to season. And then you can have that, um, that sauce with uh, either pasta or rice. Now we did one with rice last week, and I got two of these. These ones in there. Um, I got two of these out that were just extra. You know, I cooked too much. Now I purposely cooked too much, but it didn't really cost me that much more to get a little bit of extra beef and add a bigger jar of sauce in. But for what it did cost me, say it cost me two pound extra. I got two meals, a pound each. That's three pound fifty cheaper than that. And that tastes awesome because I made it and I seasoned it and I put everything in just the way I like it. Uh, it's not somebody else's recipe that's been inflicted on me and I'm just eating it because it's all the do in the flavours. I wanted this because it was what I like and that's exactly what I've got. And I went on from there and I've done other things. Um, I've got one in here. Cereals. Uh, breakfast. Now, yeah, you can have porridge. Um, you can buy the, you know, the little sachets of porridge, Quaker Oats do, whatever you just add milk to. So you could add you know, a bit of milk powder and do the same thing. But one I really like, and a, a cereal that I fell in love with with the Expedition Foods sort of brand, is what they used to call the hot cereal starts. And that was pretty much cereal with milk, uh, with nuts, raisins, clusters, that kind of thing. But you added obviously hot water to it, and it was really nice, very creamy, um, very filling in the morning. But it wasn't as heavy on you as you know, like a full serving of porridges. And again, this sort of £4.50 a meal. So what I did was I went to the supermarket and I bought myself a carton of oats and more cereal or something like that. And basically it's exactly that. It's um, corn flakes, it's clusters, it's nuts and oats, raisins. And I added two teaspoons of milk powder and put it in a vacuum pack. Add hot water to that and it's exactly the same thing. The only difference is that costs about 35 pence a meal in comparison to £4.50. Um, and you may be wondering, you know, obviously you're getting four carats of this stuff, Matt, you need to buy a dehydrator in a vacuum packet. Well, you, you're very true, you do. Uh, dehydrators, you can pick up. I've got a, a Stockley, um, which I think is made by Escalibur, I'm not sure. But it's got trays that sit on top of a fan, um, and it cost me about £100. 
and that gets used an awful lot for beef jerkies, that kind of thing. And I've got a vacuum packer, this is a sealer meal. And like I say, I buy my bags from eBay, they're about £9 for 20 metres of bag, and I've not run out yet with the first lot I bought. And I got this from tescos.com. Um, for those of you in America, it's a bit like Walmart, you know, it's a big supermarket brand, and they have an online section at Tesco Direct, and I pay £30 for that. And all right, you go on the internet, Google it, you probably see some of them about £70 up to £100, but £30, and it's already outdone itself. Um, it really has. So, I've made meals, and I've made breakfast cereal, but then I started thinking about snacks, what sort of thing can I eat? Now, you can go the whole hog, and I've done one here just for the, the sake of it, that's a pot noodle. Now, a pot noodle is quite a cumbersome pot, you know, it's, you know, it, you wouldn't go in a backpack, it's got a foil lid that could be punctured easy, and then there were curry noodles all over your pack. Empty it out, put the sachet in there, and put it in a Ziploc bag, or, you know, one of these heat sealed vacuum pack bags. Just add water to it, and you've still got the same pot noodle. It tastes exactly the same. Now, I'm not saying that pot noodles are highly nutritious meals because I've no idea, and they're probably not. But I like them; they're nice, and it's a little quick noodle meal that you can make. You could buy super noodles, crush them up, put them in there, add the sachet in, and you could do exactly the same for a cheap noodle lunch meal. Um, also, this one here. This is one sachet of cup of soup and two tablespoons of instant mashed potato. Smash. And it gives you a nice, thick, creamy, chicken flavoured mashed potato. Really nice. Packed with, you know, carbohydrates, that kind of thing. Now, I'm very pretty careful with the stuff I buy. I, I'm not going to, you know, buy stuff that's full of E-numbers and things and preservatives. Although you can't really help it if you're buying pre made stuff. But you can make your own. You can make your own mashed potato and dehydrate it. You can make your own soup and dehydrate it. And you can make exactly the same thing with this. Again, it's an awful lot cheaper. I mean, even that, that, you know, there's nothing in there that I've made. That's, as I said, it's cup of soups, um, bachelor's chicken cup of soup, I think, which were a pound for a pack of six. And instant mashed potato, which comes in a jar like that. Um, 280 grams in there. And I think that was about a pound as well, one pound 50. So for everything you'd get out of that, you know, you're talking a couple of pence for a meal. 50p a meal, that's a lot cheaper. Uh, and the other thing you can do, which I haven't got here, is stuff like trail mix, and um, people in America call it gawp and that, good old raisins and peanuts. But you can add what you want in. I used to have them, um, like a patrol mix I used to make, when we used to go on patrol and stuff, in my pocket it'd have things like raisins, nuts, digestive biscuits crumbled up, anything. It's just something to pick at when you're walking around. So you're kind of eliminating the need for snack bars. Um, you know, like these, because you just pick it out of a bag in your pocket and you can just, you know, go as you want. Do it in a Ziploc bag because it's sealable. So that's where I've gone with my food and I, I'm really quite happy with this. Now, the way that, you know, you make one of these, I mean, my biggest advice is to go on YouTube, obviously you're on it now, um, to type in your search box to the Hungry Hammock Hanger or Mr. Babblefish 5. Um, he's a big jolly chap and he makes some awesome food. And that's kind of where I got my ideas from. Now, obviously, being in the UK, things are slightly different. We have different sorts of food. Things have different names. But you can get a pretty good idea and just adapt it. Things like bolognese, things like cottage pie, um, the things to avoid are stuff like dairy. You can use hard cheeses, but don't start dehydrating, you know, soft cheese, brie, milk, that kind of thing. That's why I use stuff like instant mashed potato because I'm not having to make it up with milk and butter. Um, I'm just buying it freeze-dried. Uh, same with milk powder, I'd always buy milk powder rather than trying to make your own. Not that I'd have a clue how to do that, but you get the gist of it. So you basically make your bolognese up as you would, or you make your shepherd's pie up. Um, you know, you serve up for the family and whatever's left over, put it to one side. Pop it in your dehydrator. If it's got meat in, do it at the highest temperatures, around 70 degrees. 10 to 12 hours, come back, it'll be rock solid, nice and crispy. Put it in your bag, put it in the vacuum packer, and there you go. Get out on the trail, um, you will take this, cut the top off, add your water, pop it inside your reflected pouch, lid on, 10 minutes, fully rehydrated, you've got the same meal you cook for your family at home, cost you a fraction of the price of a, you know, a freeze-dried backpacking expedition meal and it's much better tasting. So I don't think you can go far wrong with that. And I'm going to be trying this um, for the rest of the year. 
and that's you know all I'm going to eat now while I'm out and about is, is stuff that I've made myself or things that I've produced myself from you know pre-bought items but I'm certainly not going to waste any more money on backpacking food um, and I see how I get on I might find that it becomes a little bit of a pain having to wait so long to rehydrate but let's be honest I mean this one here says um, remove the oxygen absorber sachet follow the instructions on the reverse of the food bag add boiling water to the internal line wait five to eight minutes well I'd only wait ten minutes to do that so it's, you know, there is no big dramas about it so that's what you know I'm doing with food and I think that kind of concludes the, the food chat um, but yeah so there you go so if anyone does want any tips like I say check out Mr Babblefish 5 or contact me and I'll tell you everything that I know about how I dehydrate my own meals and freeze dry them I hope you've enjoyed this little look back at the pack like I say you know it's lost an awful lot of weight um, maybe I could do with doing the same I don't know but you know it's made a big difference to that rucksack it really is very light um, it's got everything that I could possibly need in it but it hasn't got anything that I don't need in it and that's the great thing about getting lighter um, and you know taking advice from other people obviously don't do anything dangerous and um, you know stay safe ensure that you have got enough warm kit you know don't cut back on insulation don't cut back on rain gear and shelter because you know if all else fails at least you can get into your bed and you're going to be dry and warm but you know experiment with stuff experiment with things like i said about the stuff sacks and that do you need them probably not if you're like me and you've got a big cuban stuff sack do you really need other stuff sacks do i really need that spinnaker stuff sack that's got my clothes in probably not you know there's absolutely no need if i needed to i could use a little ziploc bag and shove it in the bottom if i wanted to separate it but again it's a learning curve um, and i'll get back to you you know if anything else changes in my pack uh, and we can talk more you know about where i've gone lighter and also if you if you see anything else that you think you know it's a glaring thing look at it how about changing this point that out as well because i'm more than happy you know for people to show me where i'm going wrong with this um i think it's something that's taken over now in the backpacking community in the uk be it whether you're a hammer camper or be it whether you're a ground camper getting lighter is just better for you you know you're carrying less weight on your back which means you can do more mileage you're less fatigued when you get there um, and in this day and age lightweight doesn't mean you have to sleep in a plastic bag you know there's an awful lot of high tech all right it might be expensive um, you know shelters sleeping bags but there's other savings where we can save stuff you know you don't have to necessarily go out and buy a titanium pot when you can get you know a couple of cents for a beer can and adapt it if you don't like beer cans cheap things like the Imusa pots for a couple of dollars five dollars each get tinny mini ball design to make you a lid make yourself a little pot cosy you've got everything you need there it's lightweight and it's cheap so it's the balance um, again anybody got any questions just give me a shout leave a comment or send me a message send me an email i'll be more than happy to get back to you i hope this has helped you you know see anything in your pack that you no longer need um, and i look forward to you know bumping into more of you out on the trails in the coming year uh, and have a, have a good 2012 for walking and i look forward to uh, to seeing you all about you guys take care and I'll catch you in another video.